Hello and welcome to the second episode of Blender Basics. In this episode we're going, we are going to be covering um, the creation and editing of primitives such as this cube. So first you can hit d the delete key and hit OK to delete the default cube and then if you hit shift and A it will bring up this add menu. From here you can select a mesh, a curve, surface, and a bunch of other things that we might get to later. So you can select any one of these things, maybe a torus for kind of a donut, um, or you could go in and get a Bezier curve, which are kind of fun to play with. They are, they're kind of a different beast out there. Um, you can make things like vines and tree trunks with these. Um, you can also make a path for a cart to follow, but that is definitely for a for another tutorial. So go ahead, delete the curve. Okay. And then maybe import let's import a circle. So if you go and hit tab it will go into edit mode. From here you can hit G to grab it just like in the uh, in the world mode. So if I hit G after hitting tab to go back into object mode I can move it around just like in object mode. If I uh, hit the R I can rotate so it rotates and then I can also scale. All of those are the exact same, however the origin, if you're in object mode, the origin will move with the object. If you're in edit mode, the origin will stay right in the middle. This can be both a good thing and a bad thing. Um, we'll get into more details on that later. Uh, so that's kind of moving around with a circle. So that makes it pretty easy. Let's see. Nope. So as you can see here, or maybe not, I'm going to import a new cube. So hit Shift A and then a cube. If we go into the uh, front mode, so hit 1 on the uh, numpad and then hit Z to go into wireframe view mode, you'll notice that it kind of has this 3D effect, which looks cool, but it's really not very helpful for normal editing. So what you can do is you can hit 5, and that will just kind of square up all the edges, so you will be able to uh, make it line up with everything properly. So there's perspective mode, and there's orthographic mode. I usually do my work in orthographic mode just because it is much easier to work with. Um, so yeah, there you can see the effects of orthographic and perspective. Well, other way around. But yeah, you get the details. Or you get the gist of it. So now we're going to talk about loop cuts. So hit Control R and a pink, pinkish purple line should appear. If you click, you will get a new set of vertices, and you can then scale these, or rotate these, or move them in general. And it's just like these vertices, only you just created more. So say you don't have enough detail in a shape. So let me get rid of those. I'll explain what I'm doing a little bit later. Um, so we have a solid cube again. Say I'm trying to make a curve here, but for the sake of time, I had two vertices instead of three. Well, if I'm trying to make a curve that kind of comes into here 
and goes back out, I can't do that with two vertices. And I don't want to go back and redelete everything and then try again. So just hit Control R, create those where create the uh, the line wherever you want it, and then select these two vertices, and you can drag them in, and you start getting a curve. So now we have a curve. Pretty simple. So now back with the default cube again, or a cube, I can show you how to create faces and new vertices. So say you go and delete the wrong face. That was more than a face. There we go. So say I want to refill this cube. You can either do it in the um, edge select mode or the vertex select mode. What you do, you can just go around selecting the edges around the, the face that you want to create, and then if you hit the F key, it will generate a new face. So same way with the um, with vertices. You select that vertice, hold shift, select that vertice. With shift still held down, you can just go ahead and select all of them, press F, and you get a new face. Pretty easy. Um, let's see, what else can we do? Extruding. Yes, very important thing to be able to do. So I'm what right now in wireframe mode. From wireframe mode, you can select all the way through. It's kind of like it's a ghost, and it will see all of the vertices in a line here. So you can just very quickly select all of them. Um, also, to get this circle, the circle selector thing, I am pressing the C key. If you want more of a box selection, you hit the B key and just click and drag. That works fine too. Um, those are helpful ways of selecting things. Anyway, back to extruding. So with those, with the whole top plane selected, if I hit the E key and then drag the mouse, it will, deep by default, it will go in uh, whatever direction the face, is, the face is pointing, I guess. So if I do a face on the x-axis and I hit the E key, it'll move along the x. Now if it's rotated and I hit it again, it'll go in, it'll go perpendicularly to the, uh, the back line, I guess, or the back edge. So, there. <laughs> Some funky shape. Kind of cool. Now, let's talk a little bit about proportional editing. This is kind of a fun little thing that we can do. So I'm going to just hit S and scale that up. If I hit Control R and then scroll up on the mouse wheel, we can actually put in more loop cuts and I'm just going to create a grid here. There we go. So, still looks like a plane from normal view, but if we hit tab and go into edit view, or edit mode, you'll see that, in fact, it is not a normal plane. So, you can either press it down here, or you can hit the O key, and uh, it will turn on proportional editing, and what you can do with this, you, if we uh, scroll out on the mouse wheel, to make that wheel larger, um, or the circle larger, that is uh, how much influence our proportional editing has. So if you want to make a hill in a landscape or something, just turn that on, set it, I think this is smooth, it doesn't matter, just play around with the different settings, it's fairly intuitive I guess. Um, so there's a little hill, little valley. So yeah, kind of fun. Um, if we want to have less influence, just scroll in or scroll up on the mouse wheel, and 
it'll influence the planes left or less. If you want more detail, just add a few more loop cuts. So there, a little hole in the mountain. Um, yeah, so that's kind of fun. This can be helpful for some things. Other things is just terrible for. So it's really whatever your application is. Um, so I'll just delete that now. So you pretty much know everything you need to know to create a, uh, a soda can. So let's go ahead and do that. We're only going to model it out. We're not going to actually render it or anything. We're not going to make it look all pretty. So you can delete those two guys there. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to um, how to bring in a reference image. So hit the N key. Hit this uh, arrow that is pointing at the background images. Uh, also make sure that checkbox is checked. Hit add image. And I'm going to set the axis to uh, front. So we'll be able to see this from the front. Uh, like I was saying, you can look from the back. So I hit control one to see from the back. One is from the front. Three is from the right. And control three is from the left. And seven is from the top, control seven is from the bottom. Okay, so now I'm just gonna open up, let's see. I think I have it set up for movie clip. Hmm. Where's my, my uh, image? I'm going to pause this video and see if I can find my reference image. Uh, okay, so, there we go. So we just imported a reference image. If we try to look at it from the side, we won't be able to. But And it also has to be in orthographic mode. So if this says uh, perspective or persp, just hit the uh, 5 on the numpad. And that will get us into orthographic mode. So now uh, we are presented with these options. So we can change the transparency of the uh, the reference. Sometimes it's useful to have it really transparent, sometimes we don't want it that way. Um, I usually just leave it at the default. We can play with the size, so we can make it huge or we can make it tiny. Um, yeah. We can also move it along the Y, so picture this as a just a normal two-dimensional graph now. So we got our Y and our X axes, so if I move it along the X, it'll go along the X, and along the Y, it'll move along the Y. So yeah, let's, let's bring that up to the uh, X axis, so right on the X axis. And now if we hit Shift A and create a cylinder, let's go into the uh, object mode here, or the object tab on the properties, and name that can. It's always good to get in the habit of naming your objects. That way, if you start getting meshes that have, I don't know, 50 objects in it, you'll be able to remember which one's which without having to click through them all. Um, I've done that sometimes and I've gotten completely lost. So, yeah. Now, take this, right click on this uh, cylinder to make sure it's selected, and then hit G and then Z to move it up. Just kind of bring it to the middle of this reference. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to take it, scale it, and then Using this C key, I just selected all of the bottom vertices here on this cylinder, and then G and then Z to drag it down. And then just gonna follow along this edge here. So when I need to come in, I just press S and it'll scale. Of course, I have proportional editing on. So hit the O. Oops, my internet just came back. 
Um, go away. Ignore that. So just kind of scale in, and then scale in, and then let's. There we go. And then, ooh, let's scale in again a little bit, and then go up. So there is the bottom of a can. Fairly simple. If we hit smooth shading, it'll make it smooth, and that looks kind of ugly. So let's get you a, uh, a little base intro to the modifiers. One more thing, I think I forgot to mention this. If you hit N, you can bring up this properties tab, tab over here. If you hit it again, it will toggle out. You can also press this button there, and that will pull it out. I don't usually work with it out, but I do like this one over here. This is the T, the tools, I guess. So if you hit T, it gets rid of it. Hit T again, pulls it out. Anyway. Back to modifiers. So over here we got object modifiers. You can hit add modifier and edge split. What that'll do, it will take any edge that is greater than this split angle here, so 30 degrees, and it will make it have smooth shading. If it's greater than 30, it will be flat shading. So if I turn that all the way down to zero, Anything with an angle greater than zero will have rough shading, so it'll ha show all the lines. Anything with less than zero, which there isn't anything, will not. So let's just turn that up. I mean, we can turn it all the way up or not all the way up. Doesn't really matter. Um, that should be fine. Now let's go back into edit mode, so tab. If you can see the vertices, you're in edit mode. If not, you're not in ver edit mode. Either that or you have it in a different settings here. So best way to check, just down here. Make sure it's in edit mode. Anyway, um, so just pull that up. And then there. And kind of scale out. And then pull that in, and done. So there is a base of a soda can. Um, fairly simple, and I hope we can get into more details later. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah.